a little bit more about visible light. So there are seven colors in the full electromagnetic spectrum that are visible to the human eye. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, Roy G. Biv. Put them together and you have white light. Okay, and this is basically sunlight is uh, coming to us from the sun. I know you think it looks yellow, but it's considered white light. When sunlight enters Earth's atmosphere, much of the longer wavelengths, this would be the higher energy or longer wavelengths, indigo and violet, these scatter and you can't see them. Okay. Um, next comes blue light. Blue light is scattered by nitrogen and oxygen, that's N2 and O2, which is the majority of atmospheric gases, that's 99% of the gases in our atmosphere are N2 and O2 molecules, and those molecules scatter this blue light, and that's what we see when we're looking at a blue sky, we're looking at the blue light bouncing off of the nitrogen and oxygen molecules. This is called Rayleigh scattering. We can see the full complement of the colors coming from white light, from sunlight, when the colors are split. This happens when you see a rainbow and it's split by rain or water droplets in the sky. You could use a glass prism, that's what this is, to split white light. And this uh, lower, these, these lower energy colors, these are shorter wavelengths, red, orange, yellow. And those you'll see sometimes that's a less prominent scattering that happens, like during sunset, or if there's uh, more particulate matter in the sky, we see uh, different colors in the sky, and that's different scattering going on from those other types of particles. So the way this acronym is listed, Roy G. Biv, is from low energy color, red, to violet, the highest energy color. So all you have the spectrum in between are different colors, but these represent different energies, which goes back to energy values in the calculations using the equations. Naturally exposed to uh, electromagnetic radiation of all types, but what's coming from the sun, the majority of what's coming from the sun is infrared. Then we have a small amount, 8%, which is UV energy. And this UV energy, is a higher energy. So ultraviolet or UV energy can break bonds in molecules. The visible light and infrared doesn't do anything um, as far as breaking bonds, but UV can, and so you protect yourselves from UV. Ultraviolet energy is um, coming here, and we can see this is a molecule. And this spring, these uh, coils are springs. These are basically how you can think of the bonds between the, these two atoms or the bond between this two, these two atoms. And when ultraviolet light hits it, it causes the bond to vibrate. And ultraviolet light has a strong enough force on this bond so that it vibrates enough so that now this breaks apart. So UV energy can break bonds in molecules like breaking this bond right here. Infrared energy and microwaves, these are both lower energy lower energy than UV, and they do cause an effect on molecules, but not breaking bonds, okay? And so um, infrared just causes molecules to bend and stretch. We'll be looking at that more in talking about global warming. And microwaves are low energy and only cause molecules to rotate and very specific molecules to rotate in response to the type of microwave radiation that's sent out. So these are both not dangerous forms. Uh, microwaves, radio waves, visible light, those are all, um, in, include. I should include cell phones with that, those are all forms of energy that are low energy and do not break bonds in molecules. So let's review relationships between frequency, wavelength, and energy in this worksheet. 